Nah, he didn't. I don't, he showed me love every year. He's never got me, so. I think that means you're really on Hey, he must love me. I don't know. Or he might, he might not, and I don't know. <laughs> Kevin, uh, Logan on the other side, do you get a chance to talk to him real quick before or any time today? No, absolutely, man. Obviously, Logan's my guy. Uh, we trained a little bit last offseason down in Tampa. I went down there, trained with him for a couple of days. Uh, like you said, man, when Logan came in, uh, that was my second year. He was obviously brought in. You know, he was the highest paid guy in the room. He was our leader at the time. And um, I learned a lot from Logan, just his work ethic, uh, just being a leader in the meeting rooms and doing all the little things. So I learned a lot from him. So obviously we chopped it up for a while over there on the sideline, just talking about, you know, old ball, old things we used to do. But uh, it's good to see him out there. You competed against Julio, obviously, a lot last year. What was it like competing against him uh, today? Did you get a chance to talk to him? Yeah, I did, man. Obviously, he made a couple plays. He made a play in the two-minute over there. But obviously, you know, future Hall of Famer, uh, any time that any of our – corners, Caleb, Roger, they can line up against him. Uh, I just talk to him like, hey, this is what it's going to be every single week. I mean, it's a future Hall of Famer, so uh, it's a good guy to, to kind of, I wouldn't say compare yourself against, but, um, you know, it's the type of receivers you're going to see week in and week out when you're facing those number ones. So, obviously, it was good to see him out there healthy and uh, going out there practicing, going hard. How does Tampa's personnel kind of present a different challenge for you guys, even though you guys played him before? But what does they, how do, what they do kind of challenge you guys for, uh, what you guys bring out there on the field? Uh, I mean, it's kind of tough to say, honestly, because, you know, a lot of the guys are out. Uh, Mike Evans didn't practice, Russell Gage, Chris Godwin. So we really wasn't having a real opportunity to face their number ones. Um, and obviously, Tom wasn't out there. They had some guys. I think Gina Bonnie Bernard was a really good running back out the backfield. So it's kind of tough to gauge that. I honestly felt like our defense went out there, and, and we, we set the tempo. And we set the tone today. I feel like we had some really good plays. I mean, they had some plays as well. But for the most part, I felt like we was pretty dominant. Uh, we got to watch the film. But uh, really like how we looked out, looked out there on defense. Knowing how much the intensity was, was turned up, how were you guys in the backfield from a communication standpoint? How were you able to maintain that? I mean, I think we was locked in today, honestly. I mean, we kind of knew. With those guys being out, they was going to come out in some different personnel. They came out there, three tight ends, two receivers. Uh, they came out there one time, two two tight ends, three receivers and stuff like that. So we kind of just knew our communication had to be on point. I think it was really good today. Obviously, still had to watch the film. It was still a couple of plays that we was a little shaky or whatever. But uh, like I said, I think we was on point on the back end. And obviously, I think the front seven set the tone a lot today. Even though they didn't have you know, Evans and, and Godwin, they still had some smaller guys. For sure. Going against the Titans receivers. Exactly. Generally bigger guys. How was that? Happy birthday! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> the travel's fast, KB, but <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, I spoke too soon. <laughs> At least he didn't give, give him my eyes, though, so we good. <laughs> Y'all need to record this no more because I probably look crazy. <laughs> but, um, but no, nah, honestly, uh, obviously they had uh, – dang. Scotty Miller. Yeah, I know, right? Scotty Miller, number one, Dar Darden, a real good speed guy. So anytime I see those guys in the game personnel-wise, I kind of knew they want to stretch the field a little bit. So, um, But like I said, knowing their personnel, knowing the kind of guys that they have, is definitely a little bit different because, like I said, we're used to more big physical receivers. And um, appreciate it. And they had some short, shifty, fast guys. So, like I said, it was good, really good work today. We'll get some red zone work tomorrow. So, we're going to be excited for that as well. What do you think about some of the younger DBs today? Uh, just their kind of first time out there in joints? Right. Yeah, I mean, we just – I think we just uh, claimed Lonnie Johnson. And he got a pick on the first day. So, we – you know, good to have him out here. I know he was a really uh, – Made some plays out there in Houston as well, so we're good to have him. Uh, honestly, and I talked to some of the younger safeties that's been here, um, AC, Adrian Colbert. Our defense is real complex, um, so it is kind of tough coming in, middle of training camp. Um, not really – all the installs are pretty much in. So I think they've been doing a really good job day in, day out, just trying to learn the defense, trying to pick things up. Amani was back out here today, so it was good to have him as well. But I think as a whole, as our defensive group, um, as complex as this defense is, some of the young guys, I think they have done a great job of understanding just the details of the defense. There's always things we're going to continue to work on. But overall, especially how it's been in previous years, I think the communication, the details, I think it's been pretty spot on. Come off a day like today, and you said you felt like the defense was on point for the most part and did the job. And you go watch the film. Does it usually validate what you feel like coming off the field, or or do you, or sometimes does it disappoint you? Now, honestly, I wouldn't say it disappoints, but sometimes, and I always say this, usually it's never as good as you think, and it's never as bad as you think as well. So, I definitely felt like the energy was great. Um, just looking at some of the plays, I think that we really dominated. But honestly, um, I think that should be the expectation. It shouldn't be like we should be surprised or anything like that. That should be what we want to do every single day. But obviously, like I said, they had some plays. They made some plays. They 
kind of made some plays in that two minute as well. So, um, but overall, I feel like the sense come out the field. Uh, we feel really good about you know how we competed today. On the defense, how do you make sure that uh, you stack today on tomorrow and come back out with the same, if not better? I mean, just preach it when we get back into our meetings that, hey, we watched the film, we corrected some things, but overall it was a good day. We had to continue to stack days because, you know, you can play good one week and then, you know, wet the bed the next week, and that's not uh, what you want to do in this NFL or in this league. So, um, like I said, it's good to come up here against Tampa to play uh, practice against those guys, but um, after reviewing the film, uh, if guys made a great play, hey, we have to continue to build on that. I know, like, uh, previous practice, Caleb had a really good practice. He had some PBUs out there, and I told him coming out here today, hey, let's stack days. Let's continue to stack those things. So it's something that we're always going to preach and preach. You know, it's going to be guys that's going to, you know, have up and down days here and there, but you want to have more good days than bad days. So Mike said that Caleb had a good day yesterday, didn't really like his day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that, of him not being able to stack that with the competition today? Yeah, I mean, it's – I mean, he had a play in two minutes against Julio Jones. I mean, that's that's what it's going to be. And I think it's a good learning experience for him uh, to understand that, hey, sometimes you're going against guys during practice. Some guys may be out or whatever. And I'm not necessarily saying lesser competition, but you're talking about a future Hall of Fame receiver. We don't go up against those guys every single day in practice. So just to understand that that's how locked in you got to be every single day. The competition and your competitiveness has to be, you know, on 10 all times. So, uh, but like I said, I mean, I've got to watch the film. I think he made some good plays, but, you know, it may have been a little up and down. But uh, I, I would hate to try to judge performance based upon a couple plays that I've seen because if I watch the film, there's a couple times where he could have had a guy locked up and they just didn't throw the ball his side. So the life of a cornerback is tough. You know, they only judge you off the plays, off the times they throw you the ball, I mean, or throw the ball to you versus, you know, you could have, you know, six, seven good plays and then they catch the ball one play and it's like, okay, he had a bad day. So, like I said, we'll watch the film. I think he's been doing well, though. Chris on the other side, he had a solid day today, and he's sure. been stacking them. What, what are your thoughts on what he's been able to do? Yeah, man, I talked about it, uh, I think, a couple times or a few times ago when I was on the podium that I think Christian's going to be a real good X factor for us, and he has to be an X factor for us. And I told him that, uh, that you have to come out here every single day and set the tone. You're the oldest guy in the cornerback room, so you have to be the leader of that group and make sure that every single day you're bringing the energy, uh, you're super competitive. He has some good pass breakups over there in, in, uh, in in the two men or whatever. But like I said, he's been having really good days. He's been having a really good camp, and I'm looking forward to him uh, during the season. You've been managing a lot of people over the years. What, what does it feel like to finally get God and <laughs> how did you do? It wasn't that bad. I don't think he did that well. Just judging it, uh, I didn't get nothing in my eyes. I didn't see him do shaving cream on guys. I think he got various one time all in the eyes or whatever. So as long as my eyes not burning, I, I, I can do it. I'm about to go jump in the shower, and I'll forget all about it to do that, man? Is there no repercussions or what? No, nah, man, we don't mess with Ben. Ben is a wild guy. <laughs> um, like, when you talk about in the locker room, I mean, I got some stories about this guy, but he's he's crazy, uh, crazy guy. But, no, nah, I mean, Ben, he, he he's the wildy vet here, man. He gets pretty much do, does what he want to do, and, uh, you know, it's kind of like a tradition. So, honestly, I didn't see it coming at all. I was like, I usually have good peripheral vision, and he kind of snuck me. So, uh, good for him. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, I don't want to know any more surprises. I don't know. I might be good for I might be good for the rest of the off season. <laughs> All right, no. overall impressions, Ryan. I guess uh, uh, on the day. Yeah, I think we did some good things. Um, guys came out, competed. It was a good, good uh, competitive spirit out there. Uh, guys are playing fast. Guys made some plays down the field. Um, obviously, some things we got to get cleaned up. But overall, I felt like uh, we did some good things and uh, have a lot to uh, to look at and improve upon. What are some of those things you'd like to see the offense clean up on? Uh, just execution. You know, I don't think there was anything um, major. I think f first thing that jumps out at me was jumping off sides twice on third and third down, third and short, third and medium, um, trying to use cadence to, to keep the defense on their heels. Uh, and we have to be able to do that. So we, we had two movements there, um, which will hurt us and put us in third and long situations. So got obviously got to get those cleaned up. Um, but yeah, just overall, you know, I think there was a lot of good things. What, what stretch there with three straight. I guess, I guess good, Ryan. What, what specifically did you, did you like? I thought we ran the ball well. I mean, obviously, I'm carrying out fakes on a lot of it, but it uh, seemed like we were, were getting some good runs, um, some creases, and our backs were running the ball well. Like I mentioned, guys made the plays down the field for me. Uh, we were able to execute in two minutes, put ourselves in a position to go win the game twice in a row there. Um, guys are making plays, getting open. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good, good things there and definitely some things we can clean up. Did you feel like there was some carryover as far as McMath is? You know, you were going deep to him against your teammates, but now – against the Bucks, their, their secondary? 
Yeah, you know, we uh, we didn't know what we were going to get coming out, but got a couple looks to uh, to put the ball up deep. And uh, first one, Traylon made made a play for me down the field, and then uh, you know, second one, Racy contested catch was able to go up and and make a big grab for me. So uh, good to see that that carry over from you know what we've seen against our team against against Tampa today. Not only with Racy, but also with Kyle Phillips. How much do you like seeing what they do on the practice field translate well against another team when you go against them? Well, that's what you want to see, right? You want to see it, you know, carry over whether it's practice against us, practice against Tampa, or in carry over to the game. You, know, you want to see that consistency on a day-to-day -day basis. And if a guy's shown he wins consistently against our guys, and a guy shows he wins consistently against Tampa's guys, then most likely he's going to have a good chance of winning against other teams as well. So, um, the more we can do that, you know, the better uh, we're going to feel about winning those matchups. Some during during the Baltimore game, he said today, you know, seeing a different two minute defense made him hesitate. Um, you have many conversations with him about letting it rip. Yeah, we were constantly talking. You know, he's asking me questions, and I'm trying to help him out as best I can. Um, just asking what I see and I'm kind of walking him through that and and uh, what we're trying to accomplish. So there's been a lot of good conversations with him throughout this training camp. Um, you know, even even today included. So um, definitely just want to keep having those. Can you relate at all to that specific one, the hesitancy? Well, I know, you know, early in your career, things are moving fast, right? First time you know, going against, I guess he played in the game, but going against another another team in practice and uh, maybe something we haven't you know, spent a lot of time preparing for on tape, you know, like a, a game week, right? You're you kind of go in with an idea of, all right, this team likes these coverages in two minutes. They like this on third down. So, you know, coming out to a practice is a, is a tough situation because you don't put quite as much time in, in the preparation. So um, got to be able to, to make quick decisions and, and see what's going on. And for a young player, uh, that's tough. But obviously he's made a lot of strides this, this camp and, um, you know, got to keep the foot on the gas with him. How hard is that, and how does something like that develop, given how maybe off script it was? Yeah, Robert obviously did a good job. There was a big void in there. I uh, had quick pressure from the right, and um, you know he's coming in, kind of across my body a little bit. Uh, he did a good job of uh, of staying open there for me in the in the void, and was able to hit him. How refreshing is it for you? You're not doing preseason games for the most part, so you're able to go up against an opponent, maybe do some things different that you wanted to do, not going up against yourself. Yeah, it's it's good work, right? Because you know, you see, you see the things that your team does, you know, pretty consistently, right? And then it comes the game within the game with the offense and defense on, on your own team, and to come out against a team we haven't, you know, been been going against, and, and kind of test ourselves and and see different looks, uh, see guys make game time decisions against different defenses. Uh, it's really just good work for for all of us. So, like I said, proud of our guys the way we came out and competed, have some things we need to clean up, and look forward to doing that. How important is this, uh, Ryan, for, for getting that chemistry with a lot of new pass catchers for you? And, and maybe specifically, there was a stretch with Austin. I think he had three straight passes to him that he caught. that a sign that things are kind of moving in the right direction there? Yeah, no doubt. Austin's done a great job for us. You mentioned we have, we have several guys that are, are either new to this team or kind of roles stepping up on this team. And um, it's been a fun camp for me, just building those relationships, uh, building that chemistry, you know, having the conversations, you know, day-to-day -day basis on, on what I'm expecting and, and uh, how they're seeing certain things. So um, that chemistry just continues to, to build and to grow. And Austin did some really good things in that two-minute. Um, you know, he's winning one-on-one -on -one matchups and, um, and making plays. So, you know, when a guy has shown to consistently do that, it builds a lot of confidence. Ryan, with, with Malik, he always seems to us to have a pretty laid-back mentality. How important is that for a quarterback to not get too flustered when things don't go right? Yeah, I try to you know stay pretty steady. You know, I think the game is uh, is an emotional game, and there's ebbs and flows within within the game almost each and every week. So um, you have to be able to um, you know stay steady. You know, no matter no matter what's going on, things things are going well. You want to keep them going well, but you can't get too too hype. And if you know things take a downturn, you have to be able to you know keep Keep your uh, your confidence and positivity, and, and try to translate that to your teammates, and so you can you can fix things and get things going. Jeff and some of the guys on the defense talked about setting a tone, and I know that's part of like a defensive mentality. But from an offensive perspective, is that something that you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, set out to do in a situation like this? Well, we we like to play a certain type of ball. I think there's no no secret about it. Um, you know, Vrabel wants to play a certain way on offense, and our team is is built that way. So we want to play physical. We want to play tough. 
uh, come off the ball and, and move people and, and create running lanes for our running backs. So I'll have to take a look at the tape, but uh, felt like we had some some good opportunities to do that today and, and uh, good movement up front. So um, like I said, we'll take a look at the tape and, and see where we can go from here. Okay, Teresa, let's go. Uh, Mike, uh, I'm not sure if you got to watch any of the defense today. Uh, how challenging is it when you've got maybe, you know, Tom's not here today for them, so they're going up against Gabbert and Trask. You know, how do you maybe, do you put a thumb on the scale when you look at what your defense did do today when you watched it on film? Uh, we can't control who's on the other side. We've never worried about that. Uh, it was great work. Um, you know, all we can do is focus on what the call is, what the technique is, what the execution looks like, and, and coach the action and not the result. You know, it doesn't really matter who's on the other side. There's a lot happening today, man. What did you see? What did you like about what you saw? Well, I mean, I thought that we got off to a good start defensively on some of those one-on-ones. I thought we were challenging. Uh, I thought we were in tight coverage without fouling. Uh, made some plays on the football. Um, you know, Todd wanted to spend time with the with the defense and our offense, so you know, I went to the other side and was with our defense and and their offense. So, um, you know, there were some good things I thought we did. We we had a good string of third downs. Um, you know, but without, you know, looking at the tape, I just want to, you know, I thought that the, you know, there were some competitive parts and I think there's some things that obviously we're going to have to do a little better. Off the top of your head, how do you like what Tannehill and that first group did in the, the uh, two minutes? Yeah, that was encouraging just being able to view that and see the operation. I thought, you know, the protection was good. Uh, great to see Hoop there getting, you know, getting, getting us going early, um, you know, running the ball back in, getting set, all those things that we talk about with the operation. Uh, what time is critical, and and then Randy, you know, being able to step in there and, and make a kick. So, you know, unfortunately, it, it wasn't good enough on defense uh, at times over there in that situation. So, you know, we get the coach from it, and you know, I thought it was really good. I thought I appreciate how the Tampa Bay practiced. I appreciate how we practiced. I know that it's um, it's competitive and things. You know, I mean, you're going to try to take it to the edge, and you know, but I felt like um, we all respected each other. We try to stay away from the quarterback. So. Really appreciate that. What did you think of the defensive one-on-ones down there? Christian seemed to be particularly good against Julio a couple times. Maybe yeah, I just touched on that. I, I just touched on that here with the with the one-on-ones, with not being at, being tight coverage and not being in, in fouling uh, and challenging. And you know, there's some things that we have to work on, but I would say encouraging. Um, on on first glance, I, I didn't think it was probably his best day. He had a good day yesterday, and. Um, you know, I'm gonna go watch the tape, but I just, you know, didn't didn't see um, what I saw this, you know, from yesterday. I thought he, you know, some things that we need to continue to work on. Like today for your second string offensive line against this particular type defense. I'm sorry, how good is how uh, good are these like today? Oh yeah, they're great. Yeah, new looks, new schemes, new players. That's um, something we've always talked about with the joint practices is being able to to figure out who, who the guy is that you're going against, his play style, what moves he's used, you know, in one-on-ones, and then translating it over to the team drills. Malik said that he felt himself holding the ball a little too long in the two minute because it was a look that he hadn't necessarily seen before. How much of a teaching tool can that be for him? Well, it's, um, it's why we do these, and it's why we wanted him out there. And, you know, the, the look changes post-snap, and that's what, you know, good defenses do. And, you know, he'll have to see that. He'll have to recognize. And, um, you know, we'll have to just try to get him prepared for the next situation. What do you like about Lonnie? And it's good to see him have a pick right out of the gate today. Well, he's big. He's long. Uh, he's fast. He's been a physical player. So, uh, you know, we, we like the opportunity to try to add him and, and, and coach him and see if he can define a role for him, for himself on this football team and, and find a way to help us. With a lot of these, you know, starters not in preseason games. You've got Big Jeff out there. He said, I want to come out and set the tone. And it feels like he did that. How beneficial is it just to continue these joint practices? Well, they're beneficial. Uh, you know, if you can, you know, agree to respect, you know, the opponent and take care of each other. You know, nobody's out here trying to, to take any shots at each other. I get it. It's, it gets competitive and, you know, there's some barking and there's some motions and that's, that's all part of this game. So, um, you know, we'll do these as long as that we can, you know, handle it ourselves and find another team that's that's willing to do it the same way. Um, anybody that, you know, doesn't take the the full reps of practice would 
would lose out on opportunities, whether that's any of the other guys that went in. So it's not one specific guy as it relates to, um, you know, time missed. You know, I mean, every practice rep and everything that's every situation is, is critical.